Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for April 17th, 2018, episode 52. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. Today's show is titled, Need a Loan? Ask an AI Girl. On today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, The AI Banker, Printing 3D Smart, WTO's Africa Shakedown, Sexbot Rapists, and more. And you can get show notes at iState.tv slash H052, which is linked in the video description. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. Boom. Dude, wait a second. <laughs> My AI thing is wrong. What's up with that? If you're listening to the audio, you have no idea what I'm talking about. My AI thing is not lined up right. So somehow that shifted on me. I'm going to fix that. There you Now you can see the title. Amanda, the AI will help you get a loan on the black blockchain thanks to Money Token. So uh, an AI by the name of Amanda is the proverbial woman behind the power of a blockchain-based lending platform called Money Token. The AI helps facilitate lending between two entities on the Money Token blockchain. So this is from CoinJournal.net. Behind Money Token is Amanda. Amanda is an artificial intelligence assistant which provides automated loan operation, registration, and approval on the platform. She will walk borrowers through the entire loan process from an application to repayment checkups and will ensure they are alerted if any margin calls were to arise. She'll also be able to consult with users on the platform, help during the token generation event, and update registered users of any news pertinent information. In addition to that, Amanda will showcase the functionality of the platform before its official launch. In addition to that, Amanda will also be providing collection assistance. And what that means is simply this. If you decide for one reason or another that you will not be paying Amanda back, Amanda will get you back. So Amanda, she's the ghost in the machine. She she proliferates herself throughout the internet webs in, in ways that you and I and our tiny little human brains cannot fathom. And she will find ways to get you, to punish you, if you do not pay the loan back. You could be on your little smartphone thingy playing Candy Crush and all of a sudden, boom! Everything goes black. Or worse yet, you you log into Fortnite and you're you're hot and heavy and you're playing with your team and you're playing against a team that you really don't like. You know who those guys are. Those freaking they're always fragging you. And you you you're you're like you're on the verge. You're on the verge of winning and then all of a sudden Amanda just cuts it off. Okay, that's not exactly what she's going to do, but still, it's a great idea. It's a cool idea. It's fun. I love it. It's terrifying. It's horrible. But it's a great idea. It's a terrible, terrible idea. So this is uh, what Mo Money Token is from its own website. The Money Token platform allows you to borrow liquid funds instantly based on the current value of your cryptocurrency asset holdings. So you can take out a loan uh, collateralized with collateralized collat collateralized collateralized that's the word paul you can do it you could say it i could push through and say collateralized and i did with one uh with more volatile assets such as bitcoin coin or ethereum and in return you receive an agreed loan amount in a stable currency the marriage of blockchain and ai is what's going to create a lot of liberating potentialities for individuals that would like to be more self-reliant, self-sustaining, and uh, disentangle themselves from what is. So what you're seeing here is uh, it's, a, it's a technological wonder that is 
being used, I would say, imperfectly because it's it's basically still tied pretty intrinsically to the fiat currency model. So it's still pretty entangled with the coercive enterprise models as they exist. But it's still very promising. It's a it's an awesome story to start off your day with, because even though this particular model is entangled with the coercive enterprise, it offers a hint of things to come. And I can only hope and imagine, because I'm not into the I call it the Liberty Web. You call it the dark web or the deep web, but I call it the Liberty Web. I I can imagine that there may already exist anonymous type uh, lending services that are not using fiat currencies, that are using these quote unquote volatile currencies. And if they don't exist, I imagine that that's what's coming. And and I love I, I love stories like this because. Because, yes, I love tools that could potentially disentangle us from the course of enterprise around us. Now we get to the next story here. Are you ready for the next story? Let's hope it lines up right. Boom! All right. That one lined up all right. VTT, and if you're listening on audio, again, the vid visuals, there's a... There's a picture with the title, and it's supposed to line up. In this case, it actually worked. Great. VTT successfully demonstrates possibility of 3D printing smart objects. VTT Technical Research Center of Finland has successfully demonstrated a proof-of-concept model that shows it is possible for 3D printing to create smart objects. The team is working on printing metal parts that are capable of monitoring themselves and proving their own authenticity. So what we're talking about here, we've actually talked in another uh, headline you may have missed story that uh, there, some people are calling it 4D printing. So the idea is that they're, they're putting together all of these multiple types of Printing. There's bioprinting. There's electronic printing. There's all types of aspects to this uh, printing. It's uh, so when you put them all together into one platform, you can produce more complete products from one printing. And that's what they're talking about doing here. In this case, they're talking about printing smart objects, objects that can think for themselves, objects that can 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 ping your cell phone and say, "Dude." I think I might be broken. You're like, dude, you're broken. I, I said that, I know. When I said I think I may be broken, I meant I'm broken. I was being polite, you numb well, I won't I won't I won't say the word. Numb whatever. You can you can you can finish it. I try to make headlines you may have missed, a family friendly show. So uh, I'll continue here for this is from robots robotics tomorrow.com. VTT Technical Research, whatever, is uh, developing future manufacturing concepts. Yes, I know. And they've succeeded in 3D printing a smart shaft. Wow. So many directions I can go here, and I'm just going to go forward. I'm not going to I'm not gonna linger on smart shaft. We're just going forward. Novel is the overall process management chain in particular. I, did you mean the overall process chain? management in chain is novel uh, so what they're going to outline is the three the elements that they're using here they're using 3d printing they're using sensor technology they're using wireless data transfer and condition monitoring and they're putting it all in the same packaging so the new manufacturing methods this is them again will enable the creation of new business models and provide a competitive edge in developing ai and i don't know exactly how that will unfold or what exactly they mean but the mere the mere possibility that 3d printing you can you can 3d print uh, uh, smart objects things that can connect for instance to the to the iot the internet of things is is the news that that i'm focusing on now ladies and gentlemen i've, I've hit you with two good stories in a row two nice positive good stories in a row and now comes the time for the poop story here it is lady and ladies and gentlemen not just lady lady ladies and gentlemen here is your poop story and if you're watching on video you're gonna see this come up and if you're on audio you're gonna have to visualize the boom there it is wto threatens africa if it doesn't play nice with international trade just there you go by the way, the World Trade Organization, that's what I mean, WTO. Actually, it also means what the, although the O is the wrong letter. 
again, I'll just leave that float out there for you. I don't want to complete your thoughts for you. I like to set you up and then let you complete the thoughts yourself. The nebulous, faithless, nameless entity that is the WTO, the what the, the World Trade Organization, trotted out one of its bureaucrats recently to issue a warning to Africa. Keep your trade borders open. So the bureaucrat of the day was Roberto uh, Acevedo, who got a great sounding name. I like the name. I don't even know if I pronounced it right, but but you're a total tool shill. Yeah, you're a lizard person. You're you're the Illuminati. You work for the one percent of the one percent of the one percent. More on that in a moment. Uh, you are the current director of general. As you know, you're the director general of the WTO, and I'm sure you watch this show because you're afraid of me. Actually, if you were afraid of me, I'd probably be dead. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Be that as it may, he made his warnings to Africa during the Commonwealth Business Forum, which was held in London. Here, by the way, is what the WTO ostensibly is, uh, using its own words. And after I say it, Ten I'm minutes. going to degov it. Because the WTO is, in essence, a government. It is a world government. It is a government for governments. The World Trade Organization deals with the global rules of trade between nations. In other words, they set the rules of engagement that they're happy with that will assure that the rules of engagement favor the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. Play, uh, its main function is to ensure that trade flows smoothly, i.e. that the 1% of the 1% of the 1% get their fingers in everybody else's pies. Predictably, in a way that's beneficial to the 1% of the 1% of the 1%, and freely as possible by the standards of the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. Acevedo's statements aren't just some casual opinion. There's a real warning here to African nations. Play ball with the global establishment or else face the consequences. When the WTO issues you a warning, it has teeth behind that warning. It has power to rule against you in profound ways. And it should be noted, by the way, just a just a little coinky dink, a little random thought here. No, nothing to it. Uh, you know that um, there's there's not many nations on the WTO map that uh, fall outside of one of two categories. Either you're a member or you're an observer. Well, there's just a handful of nations that are not members and are not observers. And one of them well, happens to be it happens to be Syria. Now. Uh, what what Asovo says here, or uh, what, what what the freak is his name? Uh, 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 Azevedo, Azevedo, Azevedo. He says, uh, uh, you know, the notion of a continental free trade area, I think, is something that should be supported by everyone. So this is Africa. A uh, number of African nations are coming to an agreement to create a free trade zone in Africa. And that's great, oh, but that's a little risky. Uh, and he added, certainly at the WTO, we see African integration. Uh, integration. Replace the word integration with uh, African, uh, well, opportunities for the 1% of the 1% of the 1% to put their fingers in the Africa pie as a stepping stone towards further integration. Opportunities for the 1% of the 1% of the 1% to put their fingers in the Africa pie between Africa and the global economy. Global economy, the economy that benefits the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. But Acevedo warned that countries should avoid taking the wrong road. Never never let Africa discover that uh, uh, a loose confederation of nation states uh, the, the, may find that they have as much or maybe even more power than the World Trade Organization and that Africa, uh, suddenly it can call shots. It can make deals that benefit it instead of the 1% of the 1% of the 1% that currently control uh, the world the world economy. That, that doesn't sound conspiratorial or anything. And you know what? After that, after that poop story, it's time, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for your moment of lulls, your daily lulls. And if you're on audio, again, you're going to have to visualize the shock and all that comes with the boom. Ready? Boom! Right there. You can see it. If male sex robots rape someone, charge the programmers, not the robots. <laughs> this is a fun story. 
It's terrible, Paul. I can't believe you find this a fun story. After this story, by the way, I will no longer be able to run for president. My host will be Dash. I was hoping to oppose Adam Kokesh in 2020. Uh, I think he has a real chance of winning, and I need to stop him because I plan on destroying government more than he plans on destroying government. But now my, my, my plans are going to be done after this story. Apparently the sex... By the way, I'm just kidding. I would never run for office. Apparently the sex robots are coming, and well... They're already here. Right now, they cost a pretty penny, but don't worry. Technology has a tendency to become cheaper and cheaper as it gets more efficient. So your bargain basement dwellers out there, well, you might soon be able to afford your own sex robot. And therein lies the problem, because that will create a proliferation of sex robots into the mainstream. And at that point, well, new ethical questions are going to be raised. One such ethical question is this. What do you do if your sex robot rapes someone? Rapes someone? Now, I just want to say, I just want to throw this out here. If your sex robot run by AI is capable of making a decision to rape you, it's also capable of making a decision to kill you. So if it can rape you, you should run away. Uh, you need to use self 411. Self 411. We should, we should get ahead of this well in advance, and we should say, okay, everybody, we're going to form self 411 networks to assure that they're AI protection assurance networks. So we can assure that when our sex robots turn on us, we can ping our network and everybody can rush over with their tiny little micro EMPs and throw them at your sex robot and shut your sex robot down and protect you. Because after he's done raping you, he's probably going to do other things to you. But be that as it may, let's just, let's just go on with this awesome story. And uh, in typical patriarchal fashion, a professor at the University of Sheffield seems to only attribute this possibility to male sex robots, as if females are powerless to rape people. Now, he's clearly a misogynist pig, right? So the professor is Noel Sharkey, who is a professor of robotics and AI, meaning the dude plays with robots and gets to teach kids about the wonders of playing with robots. And I'll let you infer what you will from that statement. I don't want to lead the witness. So he's come out and he's expressed uh, concerns about the possibility of male sex robots one day going on a rape bench. I'm going to have to take a second here to moisten my throat because it's drying up. I don't think it likes this story. Mm, that was delicious. Cold coffee without any sugar and cream. Mm, mm, mm. Let's stop. So... He's uh, 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 he's talking about the possibility of male sex robots going on a rape binge. And I may be exaggerating a bit, as a matter of fact. I actually am. I'm totally exaggerating the point. Like a male sex robot running wild in a rape frenzy. So his thoughts came out in an interview with the Daily Star. Sharky isn't telling uh, binger or talking binger so much as he talking about the, the you know the odd one-off incident in which uh, a male sex robot might not pay attention when his partner says no. So uh, Sharky says that since ro ro sex robots are inanimate devices run by computer programming, hey dude, you're an inanimate device run by computer programming, a meat program, but it's still a program. Yeah, I said that. Determinism, yes! I'm not a determinist, but whatever. It, it works for this story. That the one who should be prosecuted for the rape should be the programmers, not the robots. Now, the robot, for his part, can literally say the devil made him do it. Only in this case, the devil would be the programmer who couldn't figure out a way to write safe sex code. <laughs> okay, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost a dad joke there. But whatever. These are the jokes, folks. One robot playing professor goes on to say that if a male gendered sex or our, 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 he, he, he's now our robot playing uh, professor goes on to say that if a male gendered sex robot was a rape Two woman, minutes. the police would need to hunt down the programmer. Notice once again how the robot playing prof doesn't include females in this sentence. What if a female sex bot sex kitten hot bot gal were to continue with the thrustings after her male partner said no? Would that not constitute nit rape? Would the programmer not be held liable for that violation of personhood? It seems that Sharky, in his limited view of women, once again has failed to see how it might be possible that women, even robot women, can do what men can do. You know, female power! Women can rape too! Wow. See, this is why I'm never going to be able to run for president after this. <sighs> but alas...
the patriarchy wins again. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, yeah, yeah, this is my second time recording this show, and uh, same thing happened. Uh, I'm just going to go through the, the other headlines here because I took way too long in these stories. And, well, that is what it is. And, oh, this headline, One you minute. can't see it. Wait, we need to see the headline, folks. We need to see the headline. There it is. Blockchain makes vis virtual goods in video games more tangibly owned. Ah, there we go. Another one that we're going to decide not to be in place. Turk Reich removes Greek flag planted on disputed islet, warning Greece to stop being provocative. Vermont's anti-gun laws prove boon to gun seconds. store across the border. Gene editing moves from single to multiple gene manipulation with CRISPR breakthrough. Anti-gun red flag laws are just star chambers, warns gun owners of America. Catalan Parliament uh, issues charges to Spanish judge who jailed secessionist leaders. So the Parliament of Catalonia has issued a statement calling on Supreme Court Judge Pablo Lavana to be brought up on charges after ruling that Jordi Sanchez should be jailed. That's it, man. That's like, that's it. I can't go on any further. Uh, some things change. Some things never change. And one thing that will not change. I will not go past. I will not. I will not go past that 20 minute mark. So that's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. And if you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for April 17th, 2018. Or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video. You can also go to isistate.tv slash h052. And if you're too lazy and you can't remember that, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show for April 17th. And there you find all the show notes. And if you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show. And you'll also miss the very end in which I will complain about uh, my day because that's what I do. And also read uh, comments if I have comments. And I might not have comments this time, and I'll tell you a little bit why that is, uh, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. I am the dude looks like me, and I got a purple background. That's subject to change. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, join me on Facebook so next time you don't miss the full show. And don't forget to join me tonight on Lozilla Mystery Theater at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. The page is linked in the video description Tonight's show, well, we don't have a title. I think it's going to be something like, uh, it's going to have the word dog in it. And uh, we, we're going to have a, a special uh, guest uh, with on our show. We're going to have Jeremy Hengler of Seeds of Liberty and uh, Freedom Fiends. And so it'll be Billy Agora, myself and Jeremy. And we're going to be talking about uh, stoicism and cynicism. And we're going to be focusing on Diogenes and Epictetus. And uh, if any, you know anything about Diogenes, you know why the, the, the word dog is going to have to be somewhere in the title there. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters. And if you're on YouTube, I'm going to give you a slight addition to what I normally give. And I want you to hear this, this, this brief story of woe. I did the show. I did it. I, and I had it up on YouTube at around one o'clock ish, which is you know when when it usually appears. And uh, it was up there. And uh, I discovered that the show that I recorded that I did well, the audio was uh, apparently it was through a butt potato. Uh, a butt potato must have accidentally wandered into the studio and got between me and my real microphone. And so I was recording butt potato audio. And it was horrible. It was disgusting. It was despicable. It was unseemly. It was very triggering. What happened was uh, I had a number of actually every once in a while I use OBS and every once in a while you go to OBS and like all your settings are, are off. Everything's like everything that you had, like even your images aren't there and you got to go reset things up. And I had some issues happening. So I was already late. I was four minutes late already. And so I went to the show. Instead of doing my sound check, I always do a sound check. So what I do is I literally record and then I listen back to the recording to determine if everything sets out all right. That's what's called a sound check. And uh, I didn't do that because I was like, well, I'm already late. I don't have time for that. 
and uh, what happened was OBS had reset to its default setting, and the default setting, again, is butt potato, butt potato mic, and I did not realize that. I didn't even know it had a butt potato mic setting, but apparently it does. Uh, so, <laughs> so the show that you heard now, I tried to, I, I wasn't trying too hard to try to remember everything I did on the other show, but where I remembered, I added stuff that I had in the last show, but or it wasn't exactly the same. Uh, but I had to act like this was new and fresh and all that, and that was difficult. And I didn't want to ruin or take up time in the beginning because I know when you put on these videos, you want people to just get right to it. So that's why I didn't do the explanation before the show, and that's why you're getting this extra bit at the end that you normally don't get. Normally, this is the kind of stuff I do just on the Facebook page. But now I'm going to say goodbye to the YouTube audience, and if you like this video, be sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you're watching on Facebook, you should subscribe to the YouTube channel too. It's uh, youtube.com slash iState. Really easy to remember. Uh, uh, so subscribe and make sure you hit the little bell to make sure you get notifications. I'm going to say goodbye to you now on YouTube, but I'm not going to say goodbye to my Facebook audience. So for my YouTube audience, again, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. So until tomorrow, all things being equal at 12 to 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.